morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be sharing this new course over the next three weeks with you. Um, it, I'm going to explain how it came to me because it's actually quite important to, to know the background as to how I got to this. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, towards the end of the first term, I went for a run and it was a very rare moment where I was actually going for a run by myself. And I had a lot of time to just think and pray and I'd had a few ideas about what we could do for term two, but I was really just seeking God's heart on what, we, what he wanted us to do for term two. And as I was running up this one road, it was literally, as I turned the corner, I came across so much litter. And God spoke to me through that litter because in the matter of a few minutes, I had basically the next course kind of going in my head of the way that, that the things that God, I felt, wanted to, to share. And um, yeah, that happened a couple of weeks ago and we're finally at the point to actually share this with you. I've named it Christian Kids Who Care. And you're gonna understand in a few minutes how that is linked to the litter. Because when I saw this litter, I just thought I was so saddened by it. I just thought God has given us this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful creation. And we read about it in Genesis, how he created the whole world and everything in it. And then he said to man, here, you are going to be in charge of the animals. And, and um, I, I put you in charge. And look what, what is happening to our world. And in that moment, I thought like so, so often when we see so much pollution around us, air pollution, noise pollution, soil pollution, water pollution, it's sometimes almost overwhelming to think, what can we do as children, as adults, I feel it, but what can we do to make a difference? And I want to tell you that as a Christian, um, someone who believes that God created the world and, and blessed us with it, it is so important to be an example to others. When you're at break time on the field and you see a piece of plastic lying there, pick it up and put it in the bin. That is being an example and showing that you are showing respect for the world that you live in. So I've got so it's going to be a very practical um, th three weeks, which I'm very excited for. Last week term we focused on Jesus and dying on the cross, and and it was very um, embedded in scripture. And as much as this is going to be embedded in scripture, I'm going to be sharing some practical things that we can do as children and as adults and as parents and everyone of how we can make small differences in our world and in our community. The reading today is actually from Genesis 1, verse 1 to 31, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. A lot of us, it's a very common uh, verse, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And then the, the scripture goes on to explain what God did in the seven days, the things that he created one by one. He created day and night and water and land. I'm going to skip right to the end. Hopefully in your own time, maybe as a family, you can go through this uh, scripture. But at the end it says, verse 28, then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. He's talking about the humans that he created. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, look, I've given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit tr trees for your food. And I've given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. Then God looked over all he had, and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed and morning came, make, marking the sixth day. So God gave this all to us. He blessed us with this beauty of his creation. And we need to be so mindful of the little things that we can change in our everyday lives as to how to make it better. So I've thought of some very basic and very practical fun things actually that you could do at school, at, at home. For instance, bottle tops, okay? Some people know that people collect bottle tops, but they don't actually know why. Now, at my youngest son's school, they collect bottle tops and they are on such a roll, his specific class. 
These bottle tops go into a bottle about this big. And when the bottle is filled, it gets taken to P&A, which is up the road from our church. And P&A is involved in donating wheelchairs to people who cannot afford them once the bottle, top, the bottle is filled with bottle tops. That goes to recycling. So it's such a practical way. And, and recently there were some pictures shared on Facebook of people who have actually been gifted these wheelchairs. So if you just think every time you finish a milk or a juice or a water, I have a little container in my veggie drawer, so it's not out in the open. And every time we fin we, I find a bottle top, it goes in there. And when the packet gets full, my child takes it to school. Um, just as a, as a side note, the church also collects bottle tops. So if your schools don't do it, please collect them, bring them to the church when you come to Children's Church on Sunday. And there's someone who gets these bottle tops to the right places. The same goes for bread tags. Those little things that sometimes are also on the, pack, the top of fruit packets, like avos or nachis or bread, these are also collected and are donated towards the same, um, same thing with wheelchairs. The other very practical thing that we do in our house is eco brick. Now, for you who don't know, for those who don't know what eco bricks are, you literally take a two liter empty cool drink container rinse it out, let it stand upside down for a while to dry, and then you start stuffing it with plastic. Now we actually have a, a metal steel rod that I use to shovel the plastic in, and my children know I'm pedantic about it. So when they finish a packet of anything, they know that it goes in the eco brick. And before long, these things are, are, are stuffed full, they should weigh about 600 grams, and again, I know Sterling is very involved in collecting, but if not, bring it to the church and I will personally make sure that it goes to the right places. For those who don't know what they're used for, an eco brick is actually, it, it, people are building with these. So there are, there are constructions that are made by using an eco brick. So instead of the normal brick that you can picture, they use this bottle and they use concrete and things are actually made from these eco bricks. So it's a really wonderful way to just um, recycle the things that would generally just be going into your bins and then scattered all over the, the oceans and the world. Another very practical thing to do, I know this is these plastic packets. So the first thing I want to say is when your parents go to the shop, whisper in their ear, remember your material bag. I keep some in my boot and I shop with my material bags. But when I am lazy or when I've forgotten and I get to the till and I, I say, please, can I have a packet? Now, these are horrible because they blow around all over. They, get, they generally land up back in the sea. But I do have a packet at home with, my pack, with these plastic packets. And um, one thing that is a practical, good way of using them or using them in a good way, if you go for a walk in your neighborhood or if you go for a walk on the beach, grab one, put it in your pocket, and as you're walking, pick up all the litter on the beach and they put it in your packet and go and throw it away at home. We try and do this on a regular basis when we go for walks on the beach, when we remember. It's just such a practical thing and um, it's just something that you've got to train your mind to do. The other thing is switch off your lights, your electricity, when you don't need them. I, I'm pedantic. In the morning before I leave for school, I walk around to check that all the kids have switched off their lights in their bedrooms. Um, and save water. So in small ways, I mean, obviously we, we know different ways that we can do it, but don't just leave the tap on when you're brushing your teeth. Or um, save what, when you shower, put a bucket in the shower and then use it to flush the toilet. Little practical mindsets to change like that. And I think as Christians, if we are doing it for the right reasons. We're doing it because we're respecting God's earth, this beautiful, beautiful earth that he gave us. Hopefully, when you're at break next time and you see a, a straw or something that's lying on the ground, don't use straws either, but if you see something like that on the ground um, and you go and throw it away, that your friends see that and that hopefully they lead by ex that you are leading by example. Um, the last thing I'm going to end with, something that we're actually planning on doing in church uh, uh, on Sunday, is speck boom. Um, plant more plants. What, is, what do plants do? They give off oxygen, which we need to breathe. Now, in recent uh, 
a few years, speckworm has become a really popular plant specifically for the environment. There are, there's so much goodness, so many different good things that come of it, whether it's actually eating it, whether it's um, the amount of oxygen it gives off in the environment. It's a really, really, it's one of the top plants ecologically um, in saving you know, the, the environment and working towards it for its, its good. So at sun, on Sunday, we're going to be planting some, and I want to encourage you to do that. Literally, you, for speckworm, you can break it off, plant this in the ground, and it'll start growing. Um, so just conscious things like that, practical, practical, ch just changing your mindsets about looking after this earth. We've only been given one. There's not another one coming, so be really mindful to protect what we've got. I want to end with the memory verse for today, which is Psalm 24, verse 1. And it says, the earth is the Lord's and its fullness. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness. So let's try and change ways, find ways. Maybe the challenge that I have for you today is at your next dinner table, where you're sitting around as a family, just discuss some things that maybe you can do in a practical way, um, whether it's just maybe just one thing, find a container and keep all of these bottle tops. And then maybe in a few weeks' time, you're like, oh, okay, let me try and think of something else I can do. Start eco-bricking. There's so much that we can do to, to make practical changes. Let's end in prayer. Father God, thank you for the beautiful, beautiful earth that you've, you've given us. Thank you that we, for the privilege it is to just live and be on this planet and I pray, Father God, that you would, um, you would be with every single child of NMC, all the children that listen to this, the adults that listen to this, that you would stir something in their heart to make practical changes, to lead by example, to go out and sometimes it's not even you know, saying your name out loud, that it's just actually people watching your, a person's behavior to know that there's something else special about them that you live in their hearts. And I pray that that would be the case for these children. I pray that um, they would be able to find practical ways and change their mindset to just look after the things that you have given them. Um, I just pray for this week and that you would be with them at school and that your, your protection would be over all of us. Pray this in and through your name. Amen.